example number one if f is a function from n to n defined as fx is equal to x square examine whether the function is injective or subjective so let's check injectivity first let x1 and x2 belong to set of natural numbers such that fx1 is equal to fx2 it implies that x1 is square is equal to x2 square it implies that x1 is square minus x2 square is equal to zero it implies that x1 plus x2 into x1 minus x2 is equal to zero so either x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 or x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. But since x1 and x2 belong to set of natural numbers, the sum of two natural numbers can never be equal to 0. So, x1 is equal to x2 is the only valid result thus fx1 is equal to fx2 implies that x1 is equal to x2 only thus f x is an injective function Now let's check subjectivity of the function. For that purpose, let us assume y is equal to fx or y is equal to x square since fx is equal to x square. It implies that x is equal to under root y though there should be x is equal to plus minus under root y but we neglect negative sign because x belongs to the set of natural numbers Now, as we see, x is defined for those values of y for which for which under root y belongs to set of natural numbers. It implies that x is defined
for y is equal to 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. So, range of f is equal to set of 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on to infinity. But, codomain of f is equal to n. It implies that range of f is not equal to codomain of f. Thus, f is not a subjective function. Now let's take example number two. If f is a function from r to r and fx is defined as x square and r is a set of real numbers, Examine whether f is 1, 1 function, which is also known as injective function, or an onto function, which is also known as surjective function. So let's check the injectivity of the function first. Let us assume two arbitrary elements x1 and x2 from the set of real numbers such that fx1 is equal to fx2. It implies that x1 is square is equal to x2 square because fx is equal to x square. Transposing x2 square to left hand side, we may write it as x1 square minus x2 square is equal to 0. Factorizing this, we may write it as x1 plus x2 into x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. Now we get the two possibilities. Either x1 plus x2 is equal to 0 or x1 minus x2 is equal to 0. Since The sum and difference of two real numbers. are, sorry, both can be zero therefore both the results 
are valid. Thus, either x1 is equal to minus x1, x2 or x1 is equal to x2. It implies that fx1 is equal to fx2 implies that x1 is equal to plus minus x2. Hence, fx1, fx is not an injective function. Now let's check the subjectivity of the function. So let y is equal to fx or y is equal to x squared implies that x is equal to plus minus under root y. Now, clearly, x is defined for all y belongs to R positive because for all Y R negative that is the negative real numbers under root Y is not real and so, x is not defined thus range of f is equal to r positive that is non-negative real numbers but codomain of f is equal to R. So range of F is not equal to codomain of F. Hence F is not Subjective. Thus, we may conclude that F is neither injective. nor subjective. Now let's take the next example, which is if f is a function from r to r, is a function defined as fx is equal to square bracket as where square bracket x denotes the greatest integer which either which is either equal to x or less than x prove that f is neither one one nor onto function so let x1 and x2 are two real numbers such that fx1 is equal to fx2. It implies that 
greatest integer function x1 is equal to greatest integer function x2, which is true for infinite number of real numbers between any two consecutive integers. That is, for all x1 and x2 belong to an closed interval a comma a plus 1 open interval, that is, all the numbers between two integers a and a plus 1, x1 greatest integer function is equal to x2 greatest integer function, which is equal to a. Thus, fx1 is equal to fx2, then it is not necessary that x1 is equal to x2. So, f is not 1, 1 function. For example, 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.2, 1 1.25, so on to infinity, belong to a semi-open interval which is closed at 1 and open at 2 that is between 1 and 2 such that each and every number is either equal to 1 or greater than 1 but less than 2. Then greatest integer function 1 is equal to greatest integer function 1.1 is equal to greatest integer function of 1.12 and greatest integer function of 1.2 and greatest integer function of 1.25 and so on to infinity is equal to 1. Though these numbers are distinct, their greatest integer function value is the same. So, now let's check subjectivity. Let y is equal to fx or y is equal to greatest integer function x since greatest integer function x belongs to z for all x belongs to r. Thus y belongs to z for all x belongs to r. So all the possible values of y are integral values. So range of f is equal to z while codomain of f is equal to r. It implies that range of f is not equal to codomain of f or range of f is a subset of codomain of f. Thus, f is not onto function. Hence, we may conclude that F is neither one one which is also known as injective nor onto function which is also known as subjective function hence 
true. Now let f is a function from r to r and fx is a, a modulus function. Prove that f is neither 1, 1 nor onto function. Let's check the injectivity first. So let us assume two arbitrary elements x1 and x2 belonging to r such that fx1 is equal to fx2. It implies that mod x1 is equal to mod x2 which implies that x1 is equal to plus minus x2. or x1 is equal to x2 or x1 is equal to minus x2. For example, mod 2 is equal to modulus minus 2. Modulus 2 is equal to modulus minus 2 is equal to 2. So, though 2 and minus 2 are two distinct real numbers, their modulus is the same. So fx1 is equal to fx2 implies that either x1 is equal to x2 or x1 is equal to minus x2. So f is not 1 1 function. Now let's check the subjectivity of the function. Let y is equal to fx or y is equal to mod x. As we know that mod x is always greater than or equal to zero for all x belong to r. So it implies that y is greater than or equal to zero for all x belongs to r. Thus, range of f is equal to a closed, a semi closed interval square bracket zero, comma, infinity parenthesis, with all the numbers lying in this interval. But Codomain of F is equal to R. Thus, range of F is not equal to codomain of F. Hence, F is not an onto function.
Thus, we may conclude that F is neither one one nor onto function. Hence proved. Now the next example is if A is equal to R minus curly bracket 3, that all the real numbers excluding 3, and B is equal to R minus curly bracket 1, that is all the real numbers excluding 1, and F is a function from A to B such that Fx is equal to x minus 2 upon x minus 3. Examine whether f is 1 1 or on to function so let's check the injectivity Let's check the injectivity first. So let x1 and x2 belong to A, that is the domain of the function, such that fx1 is equal to fx1 is equal to fx2 implies that x1 minus 2 upon x1 minus 3 is equal to x2 minus 2 upon x2 minus 3. Cross multiplying, we get x1 minus 2 into x2 minus 3 is equal to x2, x1 minus 3 into x2 minus 2. It implies that multiplying both the brackets, we get x1, x2, x1 into minus 3, minus 3x1, minus 2 into 2, minus 2x2, and minus into minus plus 2, 3, the 6, is equal to x1 into x2, x1, x2 on the right hand side, x1 into minus 2, minus 2x1, minus 3 into x2 minus 3x2 and minus into minus plus 2 3 to 6 from both sides x1 x2 are cancelled because these terms are identical on the opposite side of equality so we may cancel them directly now we have to transpose minus 2x1 to left hand side and 2x2 to right hand side It implies that minus 3x1 transposing minus 2x1 becomes plus 2x1 is equal to minus 3x2 and transposing minus 2x2 on right hand side becomes 2x2 or simplifying we get minus x1 is equal to minus x2. It implies that x1 is equal to x2. Thus, fx1 is equal to fx2 implies that x1 is equal to x2 only.
for all x1, x2 belongs to A, that is R minus curl u bracket T. Hence, fx is one, one function. Now let's check the subjectivity of the function. So let y is equal to fx, which is equal to x minus 2 upon x minus 3. It implies that y is equal to x minus 2 upon x minus 3, which implies that y into x minus 3 is equal to x minus 2 or xy minus 3y is equal to x minus 2 or xy transposing x to left hand side becomes minus x and 3y to right hand side becomes positive 3y minus 2 as it is. Or you may take x common in the bracket we get y minus 1. or x is equal to 3y minus 2 upon y minus 1. Clearly, x is defined for all y belongs to R minus curly bracket 1, that is all the real numbers except 1. But R minus curly bracket 1 is equal to B, which is given in the sum itself. Thus, range. of f is equal to b and codomain of f is also equal to b. It implies that range of f is equal to codomain of f. Hence, f is an onto function. So, at last, we may conclude that F is one one and onto function.